Hi there, you're in the lab with your mate JJ. So today we continue with our Maxitronics <laughs> Turning One Electronic Project Lab. Uh, today is the second project. So we did our first one yesterday. Uh, today's one's a little bit uh, more involved. It's, uh, it's, it's up from three wires to nine wires now. Um, this one uh, involves the use of, a, um, of an earphone. Um, so uh, looking forward to, to putting that together and showing you how it works. I feel like I should remind you that I am an amateur electronics hobbyist. I am just beginning to learn uh, about electronics, about how to use the various equipment that I own. So uh, as I learn, I will be making a lot of mistakes. So you shouldn't rely heavily on what you hear me say because I could very well be wrong. Um, I'm very much interested in getting better at electronics. So if you see me make a mistake, I'd really love to hear from you if you could help correct any errors that I make. Um, and please be gentle with me. I, I, I am an amateur and I don't know everything and I will certainly make mistakes. So uh, with that little disclaimer out of the way, I'd like to throw you over the booth and we'll put this project together and then we'll have a look at it and, uh, and see how it behaves. Here we are in the booth, ready to do the second circuit in our 10-in-1 uh, electronic project lab. First things first, we might as well reattach this battery here. Uh, that's done. Now I'm going to pop you over to the book cam and we'll have a look at the instructions for this project. This is circuit number two, Morse code oscillator. Uh, this is a transistorized feedback oscillator that produces an audio tone into the earphone whenever the key is pressed. In this circuit, the collector output element of the transistor is connected to one end of the transformer winding and the transistor base, the input element, is connected to the other end of the same winding through the 0.001 microfarad capacitor. As a result, the energy from the transistor output feeds back to the input and is amplified by the transistor and again feeds back to the input. The circuit then oscillates and an audio tone is produced into the earphone. The values of the capacitor and resistor connected to the transistor base determine the frequency or pitch of the tone you hear. You can make the tone higher or lower by changing these values. This is a good Morse code practice oscillator. Learn how to use the international Morse code shown at the last page of this manual. So this schematics are considerably more involved than the earlier one. It uh, looks like we've got nine wires to connect for this circuit. Um, also the outputs are an earphone. Um, and I'm not sure how we're going to go about demoing that. I can't imagine you'll be able to hear it. So uh, what are we gonna do about that? I'm not sure. Um, anyway, we can see the wiring diagram here. Uh, one, two, oh, it's interesting. There doesn't seem to be as many wires here. Oh no, I'm looking at the wrong page. Yeah, okay, there's the wiring diagram. So um, let's just pop you back over to the uh, to the booth and let's put this thing together. So um, we're connecting 10 to 16. So this is 10 and 16. So that's the uh, base of the transistor over to the uh, ceramic capacitor. Now there's two ceramic capacitors in this kit. Uh, one of them's 0 0.001 microfarads and the other one's 0 0.05 microfarads. So this is the smallest capacitor on this particular board. So we've got 10 to 16 and then we've got 12 to 20. 12 to 20. Now that's connecting the uh, emitter of the, uh, of, the, of the transistor to the uh, 1K resistor. And then we've got 15 to 17. So here's 15 and here's 17. So that's connecting the transformer to the capacitor. And then we've got 10 to 22. This is 10 and 22 is a resistor over there. 10 to 22. And then we've got 14 to 23. So let's see, 14 to 23. 14 to 23, and then 21 to 29, 21 to 29, so that's uh, wiring in the, uh, the Morse key, and then 11 to 13, 11 to 13, so that's connecting the uh, transistor to the transformer, and then we've got 14 to 26, 14 to 26, so we're putting the power in now. 14 to 26. And then 27 to 28, that's just this too. It's the last one for the power for the circuit. Now, I believe the output for this guy, I've knocked out one of the cables. Uh, what's connecting to 26? 14, so in there. Now, the output of this uh, circuit is the, uh, the earphone. <coughs> Let's pop you back over to the uh, to the book, and what have we got here? 
Do you see the earphone? Oh, there. Looks like um, 13 and 24. 13 and 24. For the earphone. I'm a bit confused. So the earphone's going to connect to... Um, Yeah, I don't quite understand why they connect. Oh, sorry, back over here. It says to connect the um, the earphone to terminal twenty four, which is uh, just the uh, one of the signals on the uh, on the lamp. I, I would be very surprised if that works, but uh, we'll do what it says uh, because we don't know better. Now I've got a bunch of earphones, so hopefully one of them works. There's one. There's another one. So uh, now I'm, I'm not real sure. I don't know um, exactly how I will uh, demonstrate this to you because um, uh, this headphone uh, is probably not going to be audible um, through the microphones that I have here for for recording. So uh, maybe we might just have to rely on the oscilloscope uh, when we're doing the testing. Uh, to see that there is actually an output signal created. Now this said to connect 13 and 24, but I don't have any reason to believe that will actually work. But oh, it does. Fascinating. <clears throat> Fascinating. Uh, I don't have a theory for why this actually works because it seems to me that we've connected the uh, one end of the of the of the lamp just to a to a to a dead end. So how does how does this work? I don't understand. If you understand the principle of action here, I, I would love for you to explain it to me, um, because I don't think I've ever seen a circuit like this before, where you, where you've got uh, electricity flowing through like an element, like an, an earphone. Um, but there's no denying that this works. Yeah. Wow. And if you if you yeah, I really don't understand why that works. When I press down on the on the signal lamp pin 24, which is just wired in there, it becomes really loud. So there's something going on there, isn't there? I wonder if we could just take him off altogether. Yeah, we can. That's amazing. So this uh, crystal earphone is uh, a device that I've I've never really understood. I I, uh, I, I can't uh, account for for the for the phenomena here um, because there's only one end of this um, there's only one end of this earphone that's connected, and it is absolutely emitting an audible tone. Fascinating. Well, um, let's uh, let's take it over to the to the bench and let's have a look at this thing and see, see what we can learn. So I'll see you over there in a second. Well, here we are on the bench, getting ready to have a look at our circuit. Um, let me just throw you over here. Um, you can see uh, we've set our um, our power supply at nine volts. That that was uh, remaining from earlier. Um, so back over here, what we're going to do first is we're going to take the battery off and we're going to put the uh, <clears throat> And now I always forget, uh, positive is small, so positive is big on this side. And then the negative side is for the black wire. All right, now if we uh, turn the power on, okay, it's drawing no current at the moment. I'm just gonna put the uh, earphone in and, okay, I'm getting a tone and it's drawing such a low amount of energy that it doesn't even register. Uh, you see over here, uh, the amps, um, it's generating a tone and it still says 0 0.000 amps. So the amount of power that's being drawn is so negligible that it doesn't even, uh, it doesn't even have one milliamp uh, worth of, of juice. So uh, I can definitely hear a sound, no argument. And when I press there, the, the sound gets like easily double as loud. It's way louder. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I don't understand how this is working. If you can explain to me how this is working, I think that I might grow as an electronics hobbyist and learn something here because this thing that's just floating around here, I don't understand really how it works. Um, they did explain the circuit, so I suppose we could uh, have, have a think about it. I suppose uh, thinking never hurts. Just give me a second. So let's just put this to one side for a second and have a look at the uh, at the actual um, circuit diagram. This is the schematic. So it's an oscillator. Uh, it, it says it's an oscillator. So uh, yeah, I don't understand how this works at all. Uh, 
Yeah, I don't know. I just don't know. Anyway, um, let's put this thing uh, on the scope and uh, maybe we'll uh, learn a little if we have a look at how this is behaving. So, I don't know which parts of the scope I should connect, but if I connect maybe this bit and this bit, and then press auto on the scope, and then hold down the button. Wow. All right. Um, you couldn't see that because I, I didn't have it uh, displayed. So what we're going to do is we're going to hold down the um, the key, and I'm going to hit auto. And it's it's not triggering quite quite right, is it? Yeah. I don't understand why the scope. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to wire this in so I don't have to keep pressing the button, and then I put it on auto. And it it, uh, it locks in for a second, and then it seems to lose the. Uh, I don't know what what our options are here. Ah, oh, fascinating. So, uh, wow, that's really kind of amazing, isn't it? Let's go to utility. Not utility, display, show scale. All right, so we've got the scale on. Is that right? Offset, we'll just make it zero. Well, this is really quite surprising. Have I got this scope? I'm not sure if I've got it in 10 times mode or something. No, nope, it's in one times mode. Fascinating. So, uh, let's move that down a bit. So that's a uh, that's really quite kind of amazing, isn't it? Where um, where obviously uh, with that transformer, uh, we're generating up to thirty two volts. Isn't that fascinating? Um, I don't understand why there's that little stutter on the signal there. Uh, is that related to the trigger? Why, why would that be happening? I'm not sure why it's picked up channel 2 there. I'll just turn channel 2 off. Now, maybe measure, setting, mode. There we go, precision mode. That's heaps better. So I, I'm not sure uh, what the difference is there, but that seems to have stabilized that signal. So this is really kind of amazing, isn't it? So um, I'll just throw you back over to uh, the bench here. So we can see that we're looking at uh, that point on the headphone. I still don't understand how the headphone works with only one side of it connected, but it does. Um, and then uh, obviously whatever's happening with this transformer, uh, it's stepping up the voltage all the way up to nearly 30 volts. Um, and uh, and the, os the particular signal that we're getting, it's an oscillator, but look at look at that. It's uh, It's got two, two uh, peaks, one higher than the other. Uh, it's just fascinating. So I suppose that uh, if, we, uh, if we varied some of the parameters um, that we'd get a... Uh, <coughs> we'd get a different uh, kind of a shaped curve. Um, I'm interested in doing that, but I need to caffeinate. So um, let, let me disappear for a minute. And I'll be back in just a second. I'm back. So I've just got this potentiometer here um, and get some small alligator leads. So there's one and there's another one. So this is a 10K pot. So let's put uh, the middle terminal on here and then the other terminal on here <clears throat> and now we should be able to adjust our curve by adjusting the uh, 
the potentiometer. That's really uh, that's really changed things, hasn't it? Wow. Let's just hit auto again and see what it does. I wonder if we could uh, take that out even. I don't quite understand why uh, why the curve looks so different uh, now to what it did when we had just the stock 1K. This is just me adjusting the, uh, the resistor, which uh, changes the characteristics of the curve quite a lot, doesn't it? Wow. Now, I don't know what these options are along the side. Yeah, I don't know. Got a lot to learn about this uh, equipment. So I guess the other thing that we could adjust is the... Uh, the uh, capacitor. Now there's a capacitor here. I don't know uh, what it's rated at though. I suppose it wouldn't hurt to find out. I have a bit of equipment here called a capacitor meter. So uh, why don't we power him up and see if it'll tell us uh, what range the uh, this tuning capacitor can do. So uh, let's just clip him together and zero. Error zeroing. Oh, zeroing needs to open the leads. Zeroing, please wait. Open test leads. All right, zeroing. There it goes. All right, now let's put him on here. And we're reading one picofarad. Oh, and it goes up pretty considerably. So when it's turned all the way to the left, it's at 268 picofarads. And when it's turned all the way clockwise, it goes down. So this is the opposite than I would have expected. But uh, uh, this is 0.001 microfarads, which is uh, 1,000 picofarads. So this picofarads goes up to 200. So um, yeah, this uh, particular um, capacitor is, is pretty pretty much higher uh, than the tuning capacitor. So let's just see. I'm not sure what we should expect here. And if we uh, if we adjust the tuning cap, oh there we go. Look, it changes the uh, changes the uh, the frequency. Fascinating. So the the um, the resistance changes the frequency as well and 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 the magnitude of it so i suppose uh, it's not clear to you what i'm doing when i control this but uh when i turn the capacitance down the amplitude decreases that's mostly amplitude isn't it but the frequency as well the frequency yeah so and you can hear it in the in the uh in the earphone, you can hear it whining at a different uh, at a different rate. Fascinating. So uh, the resistance affects the measurements, and the capacitance affects well the, the outputs. Yeah. I'm going to have one last look at this uh, diagram with you, uh, and then I'm going to sign off. Um, actually, what I'll do is I'll just read to you the explanation that they gave us in the manual. This is a transistorized feedback oscillator that produces an audio tone into the earphone whenever the key is pressed. So we just took the key out, so it's constantly on here. In this circuit, the collector, which is the output element of the transistor. Now this is an NPN transistor. Now I always forget the details. I suppose I should learn. Um, today is the 8th of January, 2024. And uh, the NPN transistor looks like this. Now this is the base and this is an NPN. So on an NPN transistor, this is the collector and this is the emitter. So the emitter has the uh, black arrow on it. 
Now, it's talking about the collector, which is the top the top wire here. All right, so uh, just continuing with the explanation. In this circuit, the collector, which is the output element, okay, which is going into the transformer, okay, in this circuit, the collector, which is the output element of the transistor, is connected to one end of the transformer winding, and the transistor base, which is this end of the transistor, which is the input element, is connected to the other end of the same wiring as it is. You can see there's a winding there and there's a winding there. <sighs> Through... Oh, okay, well, we took the we took the capacitor out and we replaced it with this variable capacitor. So uh, the base goes through the capacitor, which comes through to this end of the transformer. So the collector of the NPN transistor is connected to the top wiring on the transformer, and then uh, uh, through the through the capacitor down to the other end of the transformer. Transformers, I'm going to need to learn more about. I don't completely understand these yet. I'm going to have to get across how these work. I know that they're involved in changing voltage levels, so you can put a small voltage in and get a large voltage out. Uh, but I don't really understand, and, it, and it's obviously it's got something to do with magnetism um, and coils, uh, but I don't really understand transformers yet, so I think this is an opportunity for me to learn. <sighs> so uh, the output element, which is over here, uh, is connected to one end of the transformer winding, up here on pin 13, uh, and then through the, the whole, through the capacitor back down to the other end. As a result, the energy from the transistor output, which is here, feeds back to the input and amplified by the transistor again. The circuit then oscillates and an audio tone is produced into the earphone. The values of the capacitor and the resistor connected to the transistor base determine the frequency or pitch of the tone you hear. You can make the tone higher or lower by changing these values. All right, well, this circuit is obviously an oscillator. It has something to do with feedback through the transistor. Um, I don't understand really uh, how the transformer is affecting the circuit, although obviously it does. Um, There's a resistor across. Uh, <coughs> there's a resistor across the transformer. Uh, that's here, and there's a capacitor across the transformer. And as we saw, changing those values changes the characteristics of the curve. So that's it. That's our second project. So um, I wonder if I could just throw you back over here uh, while we wrap up. So. Um, I think I need to understand better how a transformer actually works. Um, it was fun to throw the, this particular um, circuit under the scope and just see uh, what that, the, the nature of that curve was like specifically. Um, once we changed it to the variable uh, capacitor and the variable resistor, uh, the, the uh, curve became far more regular than it seemed to be when we just had the 1K resistor and the, and the uh, 0.001 microfarad uh, cap. Uh, so uh, yeah, anyway, look, that's the second project done. I'll see you th soon for the third project. Bye. I thought I might just take a minute to uh, close out this video with some uh, some concluding remarks. Um, obviously, in this project, there was a, a few th uh, things, a few electrical phenomena that I didn't expect and which I don't understand. Uh, so let me tell you what I do understand. Uh, this uh, project called the Morse code oscillator is obviously an oscillator. That's quite clear to me. And we can change the characteristics of the curve, including its amplitude and its frequency, by modifying the values of the resistors and the capacitor, the capacitor that's in use. So I, I certainly understand that, that, that to that degree. Um, what I don't really understand is how the oscillator actually happens. Um, and I'm a bit weak on what the transformer actually does. I understand that a transformer will, will convert one voltage into, say, a higher voltage, depending on the ratio of the winds in the wires. But I don't know how that in itself uh, contributes to this circuit being an oscillator. The other thing that's really stymied me is I don't understand how the high impedance earphone that we have actually functions because one end of it is just connected to a terminal that goes nowhere. Um, so it's only really going to be receiving a signal on one end of the earphone, um, which just surprises me. Like, where does the electricity flow to uh, that makes the, the earphone work? And I suppose the other thing that was a little bit su surprising, did you notice when we had a look at the uh, current drawer on this thing, that it basically was drawing negligible amount of current. Um, when we used the when we used the the, um, the the earlier one in the first project, um, the current draw was like 165 milliamps, um, and for a total of about 1.4 watts. So that was using quite a bit of uh, power um, for for a battery powered nine volt thing, of course. Um, whereas this one, uh, the the equipment that I have didn't even register. It's at 0 0.000 milliamps. Um, now I don't know if I've even got any any equipment that would be more sensitive than that. So to figure out how much power it was actually drawing, but apparently it was pretty much negligible. So there's uh, there's a number of things that I don't understand about this um, 
circuit. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tie this one off and publish it as is. Um, and uh, hopefully uh, in the future, um, my uh, understanding of how these various things improves. And uh, yeah, so, so for now, I'm just going to publish this warts and all. And uh, I hope you enjoyed watching it. And if you did enjoy watching it and you'd like to see more, please subscribe to the channel and uh, you'll see more videos uh, uh, from the, the, this particular 10 in 1 uh, Projects Lab coming out again uh, soon. And then once this one's done, we're going to keep on uh, going with the, the, the next project, which is 20 in 1. Um, so uh, thanks very much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time.